Hey everyone, welcome to a new devlog. Wow, it's been so long since I recorded this, uh, more than a year ago. And I want to explain right away like why I stopped recording. So when I was working on this uh, environment, things got really hard at some point. Like, in terms of, it was a lot of things to handle at the same time, you know? <clears throat> Uh, I had to figure out the texture and uh, figure out uh, the style, a lot of things that were not very clear in my mind. And I had to use my brain power for that. And all the devlogs and the promotion of the environment, you know, like on Twitter or other social media, it was taking some of my brain power away from that and not only that I noticed that every time that I posted a devlog or uh, a tweet or whatever I would not work on the map for some time after so this was a very interesting uh, phenomenon that I noticed it was if by posting the map, like I was tricking my brain into telling myself that I was done with the map. Maybe because of the comments, maybe because of the reactions, you know, maybe because of all these interactions. My brain at some subconscious level uh, believed that the map was done, so I didn't have I didn't have to work on it anymore. So it's, it's, it's just like something that I noticed, like every time I posted, I wouldn't touch the map for like two or three weeks, sometimes more. Uh, and I was at a point where I was really considering like giving up on the map or not giving up on the map. And I had several moments uh, like those and I wrote about them on the, on the substack. So if you go to environmentart.substack.com um, yeah, there is a post, uh, making game environments is hard and takes time. And then you can read more about uh, what was happening there during that, that time. But I want to go back to these uh, devlogs. I want to pick up where I left. And of course, now I'm going to go backwards, right? Like I was recording every step. But now that the map is done, the tutorial is released. Uh, by the way, you can go to environmentartmastery.com. Uh, and then you can see the, the tutorial. It should load. So right now the website just redirects you to the Gumroad page, but uh, I want to create a better uh, website with more explanation of what the tutorial is in the future, but it's one step at a time. So if you've only been following the devlogs before and you didn't follow the progress on other social media, uh, it might be a surprise to you, but the, the map is finished, it's mostly finished. So I'm working on a VR version, uh, and I still need to do some polish here and there. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, it took quite some time to finish this map, but I'm very happy with the result. Uh, it was hard at first, but most of the times I was having a lot of fun, and it was very cool experience to be able to create uh, such a big map on my spare time. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna spend too much time uh, showcasing the map because I'm gonna do that like in other uh, videos. So I wanna go back to the devlogs. And I wasn't sure how to go about this, uh, so I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to let me know what you wanna see more because there's so much that I can cover here. Uh, like texturing, uh, modeling, you know, like whatever the questions that I can make other videos in the future. But on this one, I want to pick up where I left on my previous devlog. So I was looking at the, pic the pictures, uh, my progress pictures, and this is about the stage I was when I recorded that video, like a little forward, like a little uh, further than this. and. It took me quite some time to figure out the texturing style. Uh, in, in the previous video I was showing these uh, substance designer textures that I made that I was not very happy with. I was not very uh, knowledgeable about substance designer at the time. So 
those textures you can see in the previous video you, you you can see the progression you know like to get good at something you, you have to make so to make this this ground texture that like now i really like is one of my favorite uh, textures i made for this map uh it was a process i had to remake this one specifically i think four times uh and, and the reason is because I was in that exploration mode. I was figuring out the style of this map. So I was trying different programs, different workflows. I tried to hand paint. I tried fully procedural. Uh, I tried pictures. And then, and then in the end, I just come up, came up with a hybrid workflow to leverage the best of each software. So for example, I was having a problem uh, drawing uh, these basic shapes in Substance Designer, so I actually drew that in Photoshop, the pattern. So I and then I brought the the pattern into Substance Designer, and then I created the texture. Uh, this is something that I want to break down uh, further in previous videos, and it's very well explained in the tutorial or Environment Art Mastery. I break down specifically this texture here. Uh, but going back to what I was saying, like it took a lot of experimentation to get to a point where I was happy with and Like for example, I tried this version that was very realistic, you know, like in quotation marks uh, a lot of uh, small scale noise and but ultimately there was not the style that I was I was looking for I, I wanted something that was more pleasing to the eyes so, in the end, the, the, the plaster wall, which is like 80% of the map, is, is actually very simple. Uh, I, I ended up using a bit of ZBrush to get some uh, patterns, uh, and then I have this photo overlay on top to add the leaks. Not this one, this one is a decal. But this here, is a big overlay texture that has like a, the base, the, the bottom gradient and the top leaks uh, and I can show like real quick how this texture looks so this one is actually uh, I started with a photo and then I added some leaks uh, using some brushes that I created and then some like very soft gradient on the bottom and um, Again, there was a lot of experimentation to get to this point. It was not like I opened a program and like, oh, I just knew exactly how I was doing, like what I was doing. I had an idea and, and then I tried a little bit of this, tried a little bit of that, and then I was like, okay, I like this. But the point that I want to get across here is it takes a lot of experimentation sometimes to get to where you want to go. You know, it's not a straight, a straight line a lot of times. And that process can be very frustrating, you know, because there are times when you look at the environment and, and you might feel like, oh, this looks really bad, you know, like, you, 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 let's say, like, you, you're happy with the progress and then you make some new progress and then you look and you're like, oh, now it looks worse. There is all, all of, of those questions, you know, that come up during the development of a long project like this. But we just have to overcome those, we have to keep moving, experimenting, trying something else. Uh, so that that's what I was doing after I stopped recording. And uh, another reason that I stopped recording is that I, I also needed some privacy, let's say, you know, like some uh, space to experiment. Because if you're showing every experiment uh, to the public, you're gonna get a lot of comments, a lot of messages, a lot of feedback, but that also creates expectations, you know, from yourself, from others, so it's, it's like having a sketchbook, you know, like if every drawing you're showing to people, that's gonna affect how you draw, but then if you have some private sketchbook that is only for yourself, and you're only drawing like when you feel like, and you don't have this pressure of showing to people, uh, I think things just flow better, you know, so I took quite some time uh, in this stage trying to answer this question. So here I was getting closer to what I was looking for. Uh, this one was uh, mostly Substance Designer, but I was using the pattern that I drew in Photoshop 
to get these more uh, organic looking uh, stones. Uh, here's another test. So this stage I was just making textures and just placing them in the art block out. So I placed the floor and I was like, okay, how does the floor work with the wall? How does all these elements combine? So it's a really fun stage because there's so much you can do just with texture, you know, to create that illusion of depth, illusion of uh, just like being a complete environment, you know? That's the, the style comes from the texture. So I love to spend a lot of times on this stage. And, and here is when it clicked for me. So this is when I got the style, you know, like, uh, it's like, so it's not like cartoony, like a Ghibli style, right? But also not photorealistic, it's like somewhere in between. Uh, I like to think it's like a hyper real, it's something believable, you know, it's like based in reality, but it's not reality, it's my interpretation of reality. So once I, I was in this stage, I was like, okay, like now I know what I'm doing. You know, like now I, I, I like this workflow, I like this style. It took me months to get there because uh, I had to experiment all these things. But then it was as if I found a recipe. Like then I had my recipe, I could create the other textures. And uh, yeah, and then it was a matter of, you know, just creating more textures. And for this map, I don't have a lot of different textures. I have um, the tile set has about eight or nine different textures, which is like a plaster wall, a stone wall, uh, two or three different grounds, uh, window sheet, uh, doors, I only have two. And with these elements, I can make different buildings, right? So. I have this uh, window material that has a few different uh, windows. So you see, there is like a like a narrow window, like a bathroom window, a double window, and this one is supposed to be like a balcony window. And those are all the windows that I use for every building. You know, like. I really like working this way because then if you make a really cool texture, it propagates to the environment. The more different textures you have, the harder it gets to keep a consistent style. And also it's more work. So I always try to reuse, you know, like what I make. So this door uh, was also like a cool one that I, I liked the style. Uh, I made a blue version, you know, it's the same wall but a blue version. And I, that's most of the buildings I use this wall or this one. I only have two walls. And that's that's more than enough to get the, the, the variation that I'm looking for here. You see like the same window, the same plaster, the same roof. So if you keep your tile set small, you can make those textures, those materials look amazing and then if you can make those look amazing your environment's gonna look amazing right as a consequence of that so i guess that's it for this devlog i don't want to make it too long uh, but for the next one uh just let me know in the comments what aspect of the environment you want to see and then i'm gonna cover that and again if you're really curious to see how this environment was made from start to finish uh, check out uh, environmentmastery.com because that's I, I, I recorded the entire process and I broke it down. I have presentations about like how to go about the arts block out, how to go about the level design, and it's all very broad uh, uh, things. It's not like I'm not showing you how to make a Spanish style. I'm using the Spanish style as an example for the workflow. So the tutorial is designed in a way that you create your own environment. You come up with your own idea. I'll show you how to come up uh, with ideas, you know, like how to be creative, how to choose things that you enjoy. And then I like, okay, this is how you design. That's how you do the art block out, uh, art experimentation, you know, and then you create your own environment. It's going to be a reflection of who you are. So that was my biggest goal with this tutorial. So yeah, uh, I'm going to 
leave this right here and uh, drop a comment below and hopefully I'm gonna record a new devlog soon when I, when I know exactly what you're looking for. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.